Hi everyone, Nancy from Metal. Today we're going to do a tutorial for the Expendables 2 title sequence that we've prepared using Shapeshifter AE. We're going to create a 3D animation all within After Effects. You know, I really enjoy working in After Effects. I find the user interface is really intuitive. And at Metal, we've worked really hard to make our products integrate seamlessly within this environment. CS6 offers 3D capabilities, but our plugins go way beyond the 3D capabilities found in CS6 and complement them quite nicely. So let's take a look at our title sequence. Let's start things off by looking at displacement mapping. It's one of the key features of Shapeshifter AE. The information from the displacement map creates the 3D information that you will use within After Effects. Here we have the 3D knife on the right and the displacement map on the left. If you look closely, you can see the subtle change in tone. This will vary the thickness of our knife and bring it to a point along the sharp edge of the blade. This was created in Photoshop. On the right, we have the texture map, also created in Photoshop. We found several different knife images and put them together to create this custom knife. We then created an alpha channel, which we use as the outline for our displacement map. There's one thing I'd like to point out. The geometry count on the knife is 406,000 triangles. That's a lot, but Shapeshifter handles it with ease. Here, let's rotate this slightly so that you can see it as a 3D object. As the knife duplicates and fans out, each one is at a slightly different angle, always moving slightly. This adds depth and realism to our animation. It's not just a flat 2D image. Next is the skull. The displacement map was created in Photoshop as well. If you have access to a 3D program, you can also use depth map to create a grayscale image. This can then be imported into After Effects and used as a displacement map. Take a look at the jaw. There's quite a bit of detail in the displacement map, as you can see in the rendered skull. Look at the shape of the skull now. We're using the alpha channel to determine the boundary of the geometry, which helps to shape the skull. We'll go back to the knife. For this part of the animation, one knife appears alone first. If we look further along the timeline, we can see 12 knives have been replicated. If we look closely, we can see that each knife has incremental 3D rotations over time. To create the other side, we simply use the After Effects mirror effect. This is a much more efficient way of getting this effect, since you render one side and flip it over, rather than doubling the amount of objects and geometry. Now, you can see that we use this same idea to replicate the guns. One object is created using a displacement map and a texture map, and then this object is replicated and distributed over time and space. Once the left side is done, we use the mirror effect for all the knives and guns. Now we will explain adaptive tessellation. All this really means is that Shapeshifter will add more or less polygons to a shape where necessary. So you can see in the flat area of this letter S, the geometry is simplified for faster rendering time. At the edges, where more detail is required, there is much more geometry to get the desired result. Now I'm going to explain reflection mapping. It's also known as environment mapping. It's where we take an image of something, such as a room, and wrap it around an object, following its geometry or shape. Reflection mapping has a major impact on the appearance of your objects in After Effects. Take a look at this surface. It's highly reflective, and we see our room quite clearly. On the other hand, this ball has a much more matte surface and reflects the room or the environment to a much lesser degree. We're going to look at our skull again and see the different appearance that it has with and without a reflection map. On the left, you can see that the skull still has many details, but they are mainly light and dark areas from the light source. On the right, the skull is picking up information from the reflection map as well as the light source. This gives the impression that the skull is in an environment with other objects and looks more realistic as a result. Now we move on to material properties. You can see that there are seven settings. Again, these will help us simulate different surface properties that occur in the real world, like uh, glass, or metal, or even plastic. These settings control how the light in the scene affects the surface of your object. 
Here you can see how the settings affect the look of the skull. We run the range from 0 to 100 on a few settings to show you what happens. Two of these settings, Opacity and Reflectivity, need to be enabled in the feature set of Shapeshifter AE. First, we'll show you Reflectivity. Go to Reflection Mapping and choose the layer which you want reflected onto your surface. You then go back to Material Properties where you can control the amount of reflectivity using the Reflectivity slider. If you don't assign a reflection map, the slider won't be active. Next, we'll activate Opacity. You need to go to the Render Quality settings and enable 3D Transparency. Simple. Then you can control Opacity with the Material Property setting. Let's compare 3D Transparency to Opacity. As you can see, the results are quite different. We'll move on to the Generator, a built-in feature of Shapeshifter AE. We use this to replicate our knives and guns. You can replicate and animate each object. Let's take a look at all the replication that we did in this animation. It looks complex, but now you know that it's actually quite easy to do. Again, there are over 13 million polygons in all, and Shapeshifter handles all that geometry incredibly well. Now we look at the mirror effect. We have replicated objects on only one side. Now that whole side is mirrored onto the other side using the After Effects mirror effect. This is a very efficient way of doing this animation. We minimize the amount of polygons and rendering time. Last but not least are the finishing touches. We use null lens flares, magic bullet, and the trap code suite to get this finish. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you soon.